Hi guys, uh, this is Pran Shu. Uh, today I wanted to take a quick look at uh, NSA's new reverse engineering tool called Ghidra and compare it with IDA. And uh, for this purpose, I've selected a, uh, a small uh, binary file. It's a small reverse me file which has a flag hidden inside it. The backstory is that it's some sort of a lottery app and uh, we're, we're, we're supposed to uh, find the hidden flag. So, um, uh, so you know, once you've downloaded the, the binary, uh, you want to go ahead, which I have, uh, you want to go ahead and um, make it executable. It's called loop. Uh, and um, if you execute uh, the binary, you'll see that um, there's an endless loop uh, that, it, uh, that it falls in. And uh, so we need to be able to print the flag uh, to... Uh, to clear the challenge. Uh, so first let's take a look at IDA. So I've got my IDA freeware um, in this folder um, and I will just go ahead and execute that. Um, and uh, what I'm going to do next is load the binary in there. Uh, I already had it loaded before so I'm just going to go ahead and double click that. And uh, alright so it's in uh, ELF executable which we know so let's take a look at the binary real quick um, if uh, if you look at it yep it's an elf 32-bit binary uh, for Linux and so that looks that looks right and so we'll just press OK to load the binary into IDA Alright, um, it looks like we've got the binary loaded, and uh, so so this is uh, the starting function or the entry, and um, what we want is to take a look at the binary again, and uh, when it executes, we notice that we've got these strings printed out for us. Uh, we're at number followed by the number and then press enter to continue. So I want to go to that location because uh, that looks like uh, an interesting place for us to begin. So in order to do that, we know that those strings are embedded in the binary and so to bring that up, we'll open subviews and strings and try to locate those strings in the binary. Alright, so uh, looks like we're starting again. Uh, we're at number followed by the number uh, slash n for a new line and press enter to continue and we have a we have a interestingly we have a uh, we have a string right here it says flag fol followed by the printing of a string and um, and new line so that string is uh, contains the uh, flag we're looking for All right uh, so let's go to this uh, let's find the subroutine that contains these strings because that's where a lot of the interesting activity is happening all right, so if you double click it, uh, it's going to take you to text view in IDA. And uh, all right, so those are the strings we're looking at. Looks like we're starting again. We're at number followed by the integer. Press enter to continue the flag and all of that. So uh, we want to jump. We, 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 we can see that this is all coming from the subroutine um, 11BD. So uh, we want to jump at that subroutine. So double click on that. And uh, all right, so that there it is. Uh, there, there we are in IDA's graph view and um, so let's take a quick look and try to understand what's going on so right so it prints this string out for us in the beginning says looks like we're starting again uh, then it loads some variables and then it tells you we're at number um, followed by the in uh, printing of the integer and uh, press enter to continue once you've pressed enter to continue it looks like it's got a compare and a jump and based on the result of that comparison it's going to jump to a certain location and uh, this uh, arrow pointing back to the function tells you that's some sort of a loop uh, it does another compare so there's another if else you know if something equals something uh, then it's going to jump to this location and it looks like uh, all right, let's take a look. Um, all right, so it looks like if it comes to this spot, then this spot loops back to the beginning, 
And that's what we're seeing, right? Because it keeps printing out this part we're at number, press enter to continue. So it's this loop right here that we want to break out of because it's, because it does press enter to continue then goes back to the top of this subroutine right here and prints uh, these strings again you know if you look at the binary um, all right so we want to break out of that loop at this point I want to load Ghidra uh, so I've already downloaded Ghidra uh, in this uh, location. For those of you who haven't installed it before, you just uh, it's, it comes in a it comes in an archive if I remember correctly, and you just unzip it, and uh, it unzips all of these files, um, and then you just dot slash uh, to run it. All right, we'll wait Ghidra to load. Um, this is going to slow down my computer quite a bit. I've got Ida and Ghidra running. At the same time, yeah, look at that CPU load. It's 91% now. Uh, 96. All right, hopefully this doesn't slow down, slow us down considerably. All right, so um, the first time you run Ghidra, it's going to ask you to make a project. I've already done that. Um, uh, I'm calling my project test. Uh, you want to go ahead and import a file now under this project. And uh, in our case, it's this file right here, loop. Uh, once you've imported the file, you can um, double click to load it. Uh, that all looks right. So press, uh, so say OK to that. And um, all right, it looks like it's trying to import the file. I might try to close. Uh, Ida. All right, so uh, it's trying to lo load the binary for us. Now, the good thing about Ghidra is that it um, comes with a decompiler. So uh, if, if this file uh, is coded in C or C++, we can kind of look at the decompiler to uh, see the corresponding C code, C or C++ code, because that's much easier to read than assembly. So uh, it has not been analyzed yet. Let's try to analyze it. Uh, this is going to take a little bit, hopefully not that long. Over here in functions, you should be able to see the functions that it is able to recognize. So, all right, so what we see here is the entry points here. Then we've got all of these functions here. All right, so we want to, once again, locate that function where our strings are, uh, are, are stored. Uh, this doesn't look like it. Uh, no. Interesting. But no. All right, there, there that is. Um, there's that function 11BD. And uh, look at this. This is pretty nice. Uh, it's got this uh, decompiler view for you where we have those strings printf, we're at number, uh, press enter to continue. We saw those, uh, we see those uh, do while loops right here. So that's that uh, small, lo uh, small loop we saw in IDA, and that's that bigger outer loop. And we're trying to break out of that out outer loop. Let's let's try to understand what's happening really quickly. So it's got this variable that is com it's doing the comparison over here. If this variable equals equals this, which is basically in its decimal representation, it's a big number in in uh, in billions. And uh, if uh, the variable equals that number. Uh, then do something. Um, otherwise, it's going to print. Uh, we're at number. Press enter to continue. And that's. And while this variable does not equal 10. All right, so let's rename this variable really quickly and uh, call it a counter. 
All right, so that's our counter variable. This variable, let's rename this as um, a. All right, so we've got the counter variable uh, at zero, and it's doing a counter equals counter plus one. All right. So what we want to do is break out of this loop, because this looks like an infinite loop to me. Uh, what we want to do is break out to the next part that prints the flag value. If you remember in IDA graph view, we saw the flag being printed um, after we break out of the uh, after we break out of the loop. So we want to be able to break out of the loop. So let's uh, let's fire up um, IDA again. And uh, this time we're going to use the uh, IDA has this feature where it lets you modify uh, a binary um, and you can patch bytes in a binary and uh, that is what we want to do. We want to modify it such that uh, uh, the that jump condition is changed uh, so that we can break out of the loop. Our objective is to print the flag. So if you look at the strings again Uh, this flag is what we want to print. Uh, let's go to the subroutine again. All right, so we want to somehow come to this spot right here and print the flag. But what we're stuck in is this loop. Uh, and if we can break out of this loop, then we can print the flag right here. Right, so in order to do that, we see that um, this jump condition controls uh, entry into that loop. So if we reverse that jump condition, that should be enough for us to uh, break out of the loop. Okay, so, so notice that we can do that by uh, patching, going into patch program in IDA and, uh, and then clicking assemble and changing that JZ to JNZ and uh, that basically reverses that condition so if you if you don't know what that means uh, look up uh, uh, the assembly um, uh, operation codes uh, jump if zero jump if not zero jump if something equals something uh, and all of that so all right so once you've done that press OK um, and uh, then we want to there's another step involved the changes are not yet applied to the binary and uh, so if you look at patched bytes at this point we're noticing that we've changed that JZ to JNZ which so the original bytes were 74 and then changing that to JNZ means uh, the patched bytes are not going to show 75 so uh, all right uh, let's go ahead and uh, commit those patches to the binary all right over here uh, in the output window it now shows you that one of one patches are applied so that should have patched our binary let's take a look all right so we run the binary again we're at number zero and bam right, it looks like we broke out of the loop and we reached that, that section of the code where the flag is being printed so uh, so yeah um, we broke out of this loop right here and uh, once we were able to do that it, the control comes down here and is then able to print the flag so uh, yeah that was a quick um, introduction to uh, NSA's new tool Ghidra uh, I really like it because um, it has uh, a few new features that I haven't seen in IDA free 
uh, I use the freeware version of IDA, and um, I haven't seen some of these features um, in the freeware version. Um, for example, this decompile view is really nice. We were able to quickly read this through the C code and uh, find out what we needed to patch and why. Uh, for a simple binary like this one, we could have done by just reading the IDA, uh, by just reading the assembly. Uh, but uh, for more complicated binaries, it really help. It's it's really helpful if uh, we can actually read the the corresponding C code. So that's it. Uh, hopefully, you've enjoyed the video, and I'll see you again soon.